Hi, in this lecture of the second part of implementation of IoT with Raspberry Pi, we are going to discuss the same integration we discussed previously, that is integration of a DHT sensor with Raspberry Pi. Additionally, we are going to include some networking components to it, that is, we are going to implement a Python scripting for client making the Raspberry Pi behave as a client, whereas on a remote desktop which will act as a server, we'll use another Python script which will act as a UDP server. So in this way, we are going to create a uh, datagram based connection between the Raspberry Pi client and the desktop based server. So again, uh, basic aim of this Internet of Things is to create an interactive environment of network devices which are all connected together. Additionally, your devices, the more the number of devices, the more intelligent and interactive your whole system should be. It should not be that you are increasing your device num number of devices whereas your system performance is going down. So, while maintaining your system performance, the device integration has to be made. So, I am sure the various strategies have been covered in the previous theoretical lectures. In this one, uh, we are going to give a basic demonstration of whatever you have learned in your previous lectures, a very rudimentary demonstration. So, in this second lecture, we will be focused more on remote data logging. So, it will be collecting uh, data from the devices in the network, it will send the data to a server or a remote machine and that remote machine will con the remote machine will control the client or the data sending device remotely. So, the system overview is as I have told you previously, a network of temperature and humidity sensors will be connected to Raspberry Pi. Here for the sake of demonstration, we are only connecting one temperature and humidity sensor with single Raspberry Pi. Data from the sensors are read, it is sent to the server over the network and the data is saved in the server. So, same as before, we have the same requirements, a Raspberry Pi, a DHT sensor, a 4.7 kilo ohm register. Uh, it is to be noted that uh, for Raspberry Pi, this 4.7 kilo ohm register must be put in between the VCC and the data pin that is between pin 1 and 2. Uh, additionally, we will be requiring jumper wires to make our connections. Again for recapitulation, we will go about discussing the DHT. So, from left to right, if you keep the grid side up, you have pins numbered 1 to 4, first being the VCC pin, fourth being the ground and the second pin is used for transmitting data. So, the connection to the Raspberry Pi will be as follows. Uh, from the previous lecture, we have just deviated a little bit. You can also use the same uh, configuration as done in the previous lectures. But remember, the board configuration for this DHT sensor must be in BCM mode, not in board mode. So, we are connecting the DHT sensor to 3.3 volt pin of the Raspberry Pi. We are connecting the data pin or pin 2 of the DHT sensor to pin 11 of Raspberry Pi. This pin 11 is in BCM mode and we are connecting pin 4 of DHT sensor to the ground pin of Raspberry Pi. Now, as in the previous lectures we had already covered, this Adafruit which supplies this DHT22 sensor, they also provide a library to integrate this sensor to Raspberry Pi via Python framework. So, this has already been installed during our previous lecture. Now, we are going to call the Adafruit underscore DHT dot read retry function to read data from the sensor. So, as you can see, the codes and the outputs are more or less similar to the previous one. We are going to read the temperature only. 
So additionally, uh, you can attach your humidity readings also. But for the sake of testing, you can just go with the temperature readings. Now, for sending the data over the network, we'll be using a client server uh, client server model. And to establish the connection, we are going to uh, take the help of a UDP based socket. Uh, we'll make a UDP based socket, which will send data from client to the server. Now, for this socket programming, this uh, generally sockets create a two-way communication between two nodes in the network. One node is termed as the server, whereas the other is termed as the client. The server performs the task or the service as requested by the client. So how do you proceed for creating a socket on Raspberry Pi? This was also covered in the previous lectures on introduction to Raspberry Pi. So it is quite simple. You assign the socket.socket .socket function to a variable and you manipulate that variable. So this socket.socket .socket function, it has three arguments. First is socket family, second is socket type, and third is protocol, which is by default zero. Socket family can be either AF underscore Unix or AF underscore INET. So Unix, as you recall, it is mainly for only Unix-based systems, whereas for most of the general purpose programming, we are going with AF underscore INET or internet protocols. Socket type can be either socket stream or socket datagram. Now, while sending a data from a client to a server, we need two scripts, one for the server and one for the client. And two things will be required. First is the IP address of the server and the port of the server to which your client will bind. So your client can have a variety of IP addresses, but it is important that your server retain a singular IP address. See, for this infrastructure, for this exact project we are demonstrating, you only require one-way communication, that is, from the client to the server. So your clients do not need to have fixed IP addresses. Maybe they can have a variety of IP addresses about which the server has no prior knowledge. But it is very important that each and every client should be aware of the server's IP address as well as the port to which the client is going to connect. So we start off with calling the function socket.socket. .socket. We uh, put the host as socket.gethostname. We assign a particular port and we bind to the port by calling the hostname as the first argument and the port number as the second argument. And we start our listening function, which waits for a client to connect to it. Now, while true, it signifies while a client has accepted the connection and, and connected to your server on that particular port, it will uh, generate one address. And this address can be stored and later on uh, used for uh, later on used for timestamping your data to which uh, on your server in various data logs. So imagine your your server has been connected to 20 different IP addresses or clients. So these 20 clients are sending variety of data to you, but you need to know the exact location of each of these clients so that later on you can segregate the data and connect to it. So once your connection has been accepted, it sends the con uh, server sends connection successful. And eventually, when the socket is terminated by the user, you call the function c.close. For the client side, again you call the function socket.socket. .socket then you get the host name, assign the port. Point to remember is this port number is similar to the server's port number because your client will be connecting to servers that particular port number. And this host 
or the host name we are talking about this has to be the server's IP address so s dot connect you connect to that particular IP address of that server on that particular port and you print that your data is being received s dot receive and eventually you close the connection so prior to this I'd like to show the basic circuit connection it's again back to the basics we have this DHT sensor the VCC the ground and the data pin are connected to their corresponding pins as defined in the previous slides uh, this Raspberry Pi is connected to the network and we have already put in the client program on the Raspberry Pi we have already downloaded and installed the Adafruit Python library on this so we are ready to go now again back to the presentation so we are actually aiming to capture data from this sensor create a socket transmit that data to a remotely located server in this case my desktop will be the server and Raspberry Pi will be the client both of these are physically separate but connected via a singular network to which various other devices are also connected but since we are dealing with IP addresses and particular ports so we can expect zero interference from other devices so the client code for obtaining readings from the sensor can be given as we define a function called sensor data you can give it any other name so we set the board uh, set the GPIO to board mode we set the warning to false sensor is adafruit underscore DST dot AM2302 then we uh, grab the humidity and temperature functions from the sensor and we return it to the calling function so in this client code for creating the socket as you can see the AF underscore INET has been called and a socket datagram is being used for this particular program my PC has this following IP and I have opened up port number 10001 it, you can randomly choose ports to create your socket so I have opened port 10001 to accept connections from various clients so my system client will try on sending data over the network to the server so H comma T that means uh, these will be assigned the humidity and temperature data from the sensor data function which we defined in the previous slide and we format it in the terms of a string and we transmit it over the socket to that particular server address and when this transmission is complete from uh, from uh, input received from the user when the user terminates the code the so the close function will execute similarly the modification for the server side is you again create an af underscore inet and soc underscore datagram socket the address will be this server's address and the port will be the port which will be used for connecting various clients to it and soc dot bind it starts the server port now while it is true it will keep on infinitely looping the data and address will be received from the socket in chunks of 4096 bytes you open a any text file called data log text or any other name you want to choose it may even not be a text file it may be a CSV file also so you use that file uh, if you remember we covered file reading and writing in programming introduction to programming in Python so using that similar concept you open a text file and whatever data you are receiving over the network you start writing to the text file as well as if you want you can keep on printing the data also 
So if you see, you'll get an output something like this. Your temperature readings uh, first is humidity, and the next one is temperature, separated separated by a comma. Your client will keep on streaming this data over and over again, new values, not the old redundant values. Every time, every data pole, it will generate a new value. So let's look into the server code first. So over here, I have my UDP server. So I have put in my IP, I put in my port, right? Data log txt. So there was this file data log dot txt. I'll delete it. Right? This I have opened in append mode so that your data keeps on appending onto the same file again and again without overwriting the previous data. So I start my server now. As you can see, the server has started. It will wait for connections from the client and until then it will do nothing. Now to access the client or the Raspberry Pi, we remotely log into this Raspberry Pi based system. So we run this particular program client.py. Prior to doing this, we may just check whether our sensor is working fine or not. Let us try to uh, read some temperature. Just like the previous lecture, I'll try running this DHT temp file. Okay, I need to change the port. the system is not responding I'll log into this Raspberry Pi again Yes, so this is my correct Raspberry Pi. Actually, we have lots of Raspberry Pi connected over the network. So, we check what exactly is the file content. So this was covered in the presentation. We opened the script file in the editor. So we are first going to check whether our temperature sensor is working fine or not. We will try running this code dhttemp.py as shown in the previous lecture. So once this is executed, if the sensor has been correctly connected, if the pins are correct, it is supposed to return uh, a temperature value on the terminal. So yes, it appears that sensor is properly connected, returns a value of 25.89 degrees Celsius. Now we can proceed with the more complicated part. We'll have a look at the client program. This is the same program which was covered in the presentation. We define a function called sensor data. We open up a socket aimed at this IP address, which is my server or desktop. 
for this particular port 10001 you can change the port according to your needs and you iteratively keep on pushing data to this server so before beginning we'll check yes the server is still on it is still waiting for incoming messages from any client which will connect to it now i'll ask my client to send data to this server so you see it is sending two values this 74.3 and 25.7 the first one is for the humidity value and the second one is from the temperature readings so this will iteratively keep on going again and again until the user terminates this program over at the server side you see the same thing is being received the humidity readings and the corresponding temperature readings so for a demonstration i'll light up a match in front of the dst sensor and you can check the corresponding readings change over at the server you see the temperature is slowly increasing so it has reached almost 27 you can see the same variations over at the client side now i'll terminate my client code so once the socket is closed once i terminate this it'll send a message closing socket and it closes down the socket you see the server code has stopped coming in right so whenever i start this code again my server will again start receiving this code so this we demonstrated using one single raspberry pi as a client and one single sensor you can obviously include multiple raspberry pis and multiple sensors all sending data to this particular server or a single ip at the port and another thing we'll check when this data is incoming into the server initially i deleted this data log.txt file now you see it has automatically created another data log.txt from this function and once i open it you see all the data has been stored so this can be used as a server log or it can be extracted and used with various algorithms for higher processing so i hope gain some experience of integrating various sensors over the network and creating a client server connection and i hope this will give you a little bit touch of this iot the course for which you have been uh, attending these lectures and in the next lecture we'll be focusing more on what to do with the data and what exactly uh, can be integrated can be done you can maybe plot the data you can store the data you can refine the data you are storing and other such tasks thank you